Whitney Shepard is suing motorist Rachel Velasquez for property damage. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case 2098, Shepard versus Velasquez. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Velasquez, I'm gonna start with you because the case is unusual and the case really starts with you. You were driving your car. Correct. And had an accident on the 13th of February of this year. Right. Tell me about it. I was going west on... You were driving? I was driving, I was driving. First, at what time did this take place on it February? It happened at about 1 a.m. Where were you coming from? From my sister's home. Anybody else in the car with you? No. What day of the week was February 13th? That was on a Saturday. So you were at a, some sort of a gathering at your sister's house? I was at my sister's house, yes. How many people were at the gathering? There was just about maybe 10 of us. And what time had you arrived at your sister's house? Saturday, mid-morning. Did you have dinner there? Yes. Any alcohol served all day? Yes. What kind? Just a beer. I wasn't there. <laughs> a beer? My beer. invitation got lost in the mail. <laughs> what were you drinking? I had drank two beers, but that, again, mind you, this was at, it was at the afternoon. Just a second. Yes. So you had two beers? Yes. Now you get into the car, it's one o'clock in the morning and you're on your way home and see what happened. Okay. Traveling from your sister's house, maybe I'll make this easier for you, how far a distance is it from your sister's house to your house? About 20 minutes. And how far into the trip did this accident occur? I like 15 minutes. And tell me about the accident. Okay, so I was gonna, about to, I, I seen like a dog or something in the street. So as soon as I seen it. Just a second. Uh -huh. So it's one o'clock in the morning, you see something in the street. That's what you said. Okay, well, it, I was, it was something, but it, it turned out to be a dog. So what did you do? I swerved to not hit the dog. You swerved to not hit the something. But it was a dog. Well, we're gonna get to how you know that. So you swerved to avoid hitting the something and you went into a house, went over a fire hydrant. The fire hydrant, actually, when I hit the fire hydrant, the fire hydrant has pushed me into the house. Fire hydrant, water, and you went into the house. The force of the fire hydrant didn't send you into the house, madam, unless you're telling me that the fire hydrant went and the water was such force that it pushed your car into the house, which I won't believe. Do you understand? So you swerved to avoid something in the road, and were clearly going at such a speed that you went right into a house. Did you go through the wall of the house? That's either a yes or a no. Yes. And that's what this case is about because Miss Shepard is a renter in that house. And she says that everything of value that she had was destroyed because of the water and inundation and your automobile insurance company paid the owner of the house for the damage to the house, but did not compensate Miss Shepard for any of her property that was destroyed. That's what the case is about. Right. So now this dog becomes sort of interesting. You have a dog? I do. Now, you say that you swerved to avoid a something that you subsequently said was a dog. Now you're in the house because that's where the car is. You're not, I assume that they had to get you out of the car. Or did you get out of the car on your own? Yeah, my car was not in the house, but I didn't, I was out, I was out of the car. I got out by myself. Do you have photographs of the house? I do. Shit. I'd like to take a look at them. Oh, that's pretty much in the house. Yeah, she went through two walls. Yeah. Do you know how much money your insurance company paid out to the homeowner? 5,000. 5,000? Is this your car? Yes. And this is where it landed? Yes. Okay, now, you got out of the car, and what did you do? I got out of the car, my sister, she was there, she was there to... What do you mean your sister was there too? She was falling right behind me, because she's the one who, we, she had seen the, the dog that, the dog that I swerved to hit, she seen the dog as well. <laughs> I'm talking to you. You got out of the car and? I, my sister, I went to walk to get my sister. And? And we waited for the ambulance to get, to get there. For whom? For me. What was wrong with you? I had three broken ribs. Where did you wait for the ambulance? Um, right in front of the house. Now tell me about the dog. The dog, I, when I went, right when I, the, the car came to a stop, I seen the dog run back into the yard. Yeah, so 
you're crashing into the front of the house. Your, your eyes are in front of you. You're crashing into a house. You take down the whole wall when you crashed into the house. And what you're telling me is you crashed into the house and out of what kind of vision? You went through a wall. How did your eyes get to the backyard? You swerve. You go into, either you swerve because there's something in the road or you swerve because you weren't paying attention or you swerve because the beers that you had were too late in the day, whatever the reason that you swerved. But now you're facing the inside of a house. I wanna know at what point you saw a dog run to the backyard. Well, the, the car wasn't, I didn't hit head on. It was on the side, it was on the, on the, the left side, the right side, it was on the right side. So I, when I hit it, everything went to the right side. It did, I didn't hit it straight on, head forward. This is your car. But I did. If I did not hit it straight. This is your on. car. So uh, you're telling me your car was damaged before? No, ma'am. Okay. Now I'd like you to tell me, Miss Shepard. I'm sure you have a list of things that were destroyed. You did not have renter's insurance. I did not. And what happened when you submitted a claim to Miss Velasquez's insurance company? Absolutely nothing. They never even got back to me on it. Okay. I'd like to see proof that your insurance company paid the owner of the house. I don't have that on me. You have your insurance card here? Yes. Good, I'd like to see it. Did you make a claim? I did, I did the day um, on February 14th. Who owns this car? I do. What kind of car were you driving? It's a 2017 Honda Accord. Did they pay to have your car fixed? No. Did they cover it at all? You had a $500 deductible for collision. Did they pay for your car? No. You have medical records? No, I didn't bring them. Did the police respond to the location? Yes. Were you given a blood alcohol test or a breathalyzer test at the scene? No. Do you have a police report? I do. I'd like to take a look at it. Okay, arrived at the scene at 2.30 in the morning. This was determined to be a solo vehicle crash with minor injuries involving an impaired driver. That impaired driver would be you, because she wasn't driving her house. Now, Ms. Velasquez, not good form when the police reports, do you see the police report? Have you seen the police report? Yes. Okay, so you know the police report found that you were impaired at the time of the accident. It also indicates that the police officer immediately after the accident questioned you on a gurney in the hospital. And that was immediately after this happened. I'm going to read what it says. Party one, Velasquez is riding her Honda at 55 miles per hour while under the influence. It says at the time of your statement, party one, that's you, states she attempted to turn left because she was heading to her mother's house, but did not recall how she crashed. Certainly don't see anything about a dog here, only an impaired driver. Okay, and then later you told this police officer that you admitted drinking three beers early at her home. Police officer said he asked you whether you felt the effects of alcohol drinks, to which you replied yes. The officer conducted a limited number of field sobriety tests at the hospital, which party one failed to perform. Party one's objective signs and symptoms of intoxication, and you were placed under arrest. No, ma'am. Yeah, I placed party one, that's you, under arrest for a DUI. This police officer determined that you were drunk. And this police report has absolutely nothing about a dog causing the accident. It has you saying, I don't know what caused the accident. Yes. And later today. I don't understand what the issue is. She paid for the tickets. You did not, but you used the vouchers. I did. Well, then she's entitled to be compensated for what she paid. I mean, I don't know. This is not Shall rocket time. Am I missing something here? Whitney Shepard claims motorist Rachel Velasquez owes for property and water damage after Rachel's car ran over a fire hydrant and crashed into Whitney's home. Something just came for my house. My house exploded. I'm stuck in here. I don't know what's going on. There is a car in my house. Oh, my God. They hit the fire hydrant. They went through, through my house. I no longer have a house. Okay, did you receive a citation? No, I did not. 
You didn't? No, ma'am. Really? No. Well, then you want me to assume that when the police officer said that he placed you under arrest, and I can understand why they didn't remove you from the hospital, that you were subsequently given a citation, but you had to receive some sort of citation from the police, madam, unless you have medical records which indicate that the blood that they drew indicated that there was no alcohol in your system because this police officer determined that you were drunk. And this police report has absolutely nothing about a dog causing the accident. It has you saying, I don't know what caused the accident. Yes. Okay, Ms. Shepard. Yes. The defendant is responsible for the damages done to your property. And so I've seen the extent of this damage done to the house. Were you able to stay in the house subsequent to this crash? No. Where did you go? I got relocated to Corona. I'm renting a room in Corona. And had you been renting the whole house? Yes, yes. For how long? 10 years. And what was your rent on the house? Seven fifteen a month. And in the 10 years that you lived there, you accumulated all your stuff? Well, that and time before I lived there, but yes. But for 10 years? For 10 years, Were you yes. able to take any of your furniture? I got three pieces of furniture, which included my mattress. It was okay? It was okay. Okay. And I got uh, an armoire that is ruined at the bottom from the water and a dresser that was ruined from the water. The rest of the furniture in the house, did it belong to you? It did. Okay. So you had a table, chairs, eating? Table and chairs, no couch. It was a small house, four, 457 square feet. What about your clothes? I have not seen my clothes since the day the accident happened. Did the water infiltrate the house as a result of the fire hydrant? Yes. I was trapped in that house for four and a half hours. Me and my dog were trapped in the house for four and a half hours. My dog was in bed with me, sleeping. When you left to rent this room, did you take anything with you? Well. The night the accident happened, when I was trapped for four and a half hours, I, I was hiding because the fire hydrant was throwing big rocks under the roof and I thought the whole house was coming down. But I kept coming out and filling a backpack with things my grandchildren had given me and pictures of my grandchildren. I didn't even think to take clothes or anything out. And you went right there to some place where you were relocated? Did you yeah, go to I was a relatives? relocated immediately. It was red tagged and it took 68 days to get a yellow tag so I could hire a company. Do you know how much the landlord got for the damage on this house? She had insurance and she's rebuilding right now. So she had her own insurance? She had her own insurance, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, Ms. Velasquez, there's no question in my mind that your mind is fresher at the time of the incident than it is months and months later when you've had a chance to reflect on why an accident is not your fault. You were questioned by police officers immediately after the incident. You responded, actually, to the police officers and told them what happened and told them that you crashed and you didn't know why. The police officers observed your demeanor. They determined that you were operating a vehicle under the influence of alcohol. I don't know whether you have insurance or not. I don't know whether you had insurance on the date of the incident or not. But by your careless and reckless behavior, You've turned this lady's life upside down. She had a little life in a little house where she had all of her property, and you've turned her life totally upside down. She has nothing, and you're responsible for that. So if you had no insurance or if the insurance disclaimed, that would be your problem. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount requested, $10,000. We're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I think it was the correct decision, as it really could be the only decision. I remember seeing a, the dog run through, and but yeah, it was just, it was an accident. I thought my house exploded, and I was in a house that was gonna come down with my dog. Luckily, I didn't hurt anybody. I think anybody who would drink and drive isn't willing to take responsibility for their actions. You know, sometimes you're the windshield, and sometimes you're a bug. Sometimes you're both. As in this case. That's, that's really a trick. I have no idea what that insurance is. A lot of fine print, I'm feeling, was probably the issue. Yeah, but I cannot imagine if it was legitimate insurance and she had legitimate insurance, except that she's got a $10,000 maximum on any sort of collision. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what it is. I actually feel sorry for that lady, don't you? Me too. Perfectly. Everything in 500 square feet in a home that she's built. And she's comfortable. She was comfortable in that. No, house. exactly. She, she has nothing. And I didn't see a whole bunch of remorse there. Nope, me neither. Case number 2033, Broussard Farrell versus Stigney. All parties, please step forward.
Tammy Broussard and Catherine Fierro are suing 21-year-old Alicia Stigney for travel vouchers and harassment. Whose son was it who was living with the defendant? My son. Broad strokes what I get from this. Is that your son? Yes, ma'am. Your son became involved, according to you, with the defendant. She has one child with your son and one child with someone else. Yes, ma'am. What I gather, there was a time that everybody was happy living together, and I believe it was your brother who was getting married in Las Vegas. Yes, ma'am. And the defendant at that time was put in charge of ordering the plane tickets for everyone to go. But the defendant was told to use someone else's credit card. And who was that? That's Catherine Fierro. That was Miss Fierro. Yes. Miss Fierro is whom? I am the fiance to her brother. In any event, the wedding did not come off as planned in Las Vegas. Parties did not use the flight tickets that you had booked with someone else's credit card. Correct. And you were given travel vouchers, and that's what they're suing for. They want their travel vouchers. That's it. So I just have a few questions. It's not a very difficult case. When you booked the flights for everyone, how many tickets did you book? It was myself, my four-year-old. The infant was a lap, so she would not count. And your boyfriend? At the time, yes. Right. Yes. And then it was also Tammy Broussard, her daughter, and that was all. Whose credit card did you pay for those tickets with? It was CAPS. That's you? Yes. And did you pay for those tickets? They were put on my credit card. Yes, they were, Your Honor. Did you, in fact, pay for them, is my question? Yes. I'd like to see proof that you paid for their flights. And if you have the following month's bill as well, did you ever receive a credit for those flights? No, I did not. On I wasn't your aware credit... what, what happened until I asked the um, son, the flight, the airline, to send me this. I'd like to see it. There you go. Because it's still on your credit card. Yes. Okay, so you received vouchers, according to this, that totaled a little over $1,000. Yes. What did you do with them? I did use them. Just a second. You didn't pay for the tickets. Correct. So my question is, why didn't you turn the vouchers over to the people who actually paid for the tickets? You booked the tickets but didn't pay for them. Wedding got canceled because of COVID. You got vouchers for what she paid for and you used them without any agreement. What is the issue here? Am I missing something? Tammy Broussard and Catherine Fierro claim 21-year-old Alicia Stigney owes for travel vouchers and harassment. Now, did you discuss the vouchers with her? I did not meet her until, I believe, early February when we left Las Vegas to go to Minnesota. And shortly after meeting her the day that we got there, um, she called my fiance, uh, asked if we could watch the baby. No, no, no. But we did have a discussion about it, a slight one. Only a discussion with you. I don't want to hear about any okay, conversation. Well, I, did have, I did bring it up. Well, I'd her. like you to tell me what the well, discussion was. Well, when we came to, walk the, to watch her baby for the first time, she went to show me the baby's room where the diapers were, where the wipes are. And she was look, running around looking for wipes. And I said, um, I don't want to seem rude, but you do have the vouchers, correct, for the wedding. They were specifically meant for my wedding. And she said she didn't really have time to talk about it, that she was going out for the weekend to, to Rochester to go out and have fun with her. So she just left very quickly. Then we watched the baby a second time, and I decided to leave a little bit early to get to the house to watch the baby. And when we arrived, she was out the door. So she did not want to talk about Well, I don't, that's sort of speculation. Yes. I don't understand what the issue is. She paid for the tickets. You did not, but you used the vouchers. I did. Well, then she's entitled to, the, to be compensated for what she paid. Your Honor, she also posted on Facebook trying to sell the tickets. Well, I mean, I don't know. This is not so rocket science. Am I me. missing something here? <laughs> you booked the tickets but mm -hmm. didn't pay for them. Wedding got canceled because of COVID. You got vouchers for what she paid for and you used them yes. without any agreement. What is the issue here? Am I missing something? I don't think so. Would you tell me? Yes. So back last year, I have the agreement. It was sometime, I think June or July. Tammy moved to Minnesota or to Austin. Don't go off on a tent. Listen no, to she, me. My, her apartment is in my name because she couldn't put it in her name. Okay. And? So they said, because later in February, Kat had now moved into Tammy's apartment with Tammy that is in my name. Okay. So they, as a thank you, they had said that they did not want the vouchers back, that I could use them. They also said that they would not 
able to use them before they expired in October of this year. That's not true, Yon. What do you mean they said? Those are two people. Yes, Tammy and Kat. I had ran into Kat at Walmart sometime late, Feb late March, I think it was, after me and the Romaine had broke up. Whatever his name is, Romaine. Romaine and I broke up. Yes. I'm still trying to figure out why you didn't give her the vouchers when you got them. We were still together, me and Romaine. We were planning on what, taking a trip this what year. What difference does it make? Were you supposed to pay for the tickets to Vegas? No. Was that your agreement, that somebody else was going to pay for them? They agreed that they'd pay for them, yes. Is that right? To come to the wedding, not to go anywhere else, just to the wedding. To come to the wedding, but the right. wedding was canceled. Yes, correct. And we did not speak at, at Walmart about anything what about I, those. What I have here are two charges, one for 320 and one for 538. Is that what you spent on the tickets? Yes. And ma'am, I have something from June 18 on Facebook where she was trying to sell them on Facebook. And I had... Um, I actually, Miss Brusson, don't understand why you're here. I'm Other... here because there's also a harassment. We have a police report regarding that. Okay. As well okay, as so with saying. regard to your claim, she owes you $858 for the tickets. Yes. So that judgment is taken care of. You can have a seat. Thank you. The other part of the claim is for harassment. Do you want to tell me when this harassment started? I assume it was after your son and the defendant terminated their relationship. And if you indicated that you had a police report, I'd like to look at it. Yes, ma'am. Here is the police report. And actually, it, um, the harassment had started. Just one second. As far as this police report you gave me, the only thing that's complained about here, really from your end initially, was the fact that your son's tax money was put in her bank account by mistake. It was something entirely different because he doesn't have the evidence that he okay. needs with that. I don't I care. I'm just telling you what the, I'm that. telling you what the document is that you handed me as evidence of harassment. And the document that you handed me as evidence of harassment, the focal point of it is last week his, that's his, tax return got deposited. Alicia withdrew all the money from the account, and this included $1,500 from the tax return and $1,000 that was in the account. That was the crux of your complaint against her. Well, that's not harassment. Well, the harassment had started on April 26th. Seventh, which is like a month after those two had broken up. It was a really nasty thing. I don't know, like it says in there, I don't know if it's coincidental, but she sped through a red or a yellow light, almost hit me once. Her boyfriend had been a total nuisance in my parking lot, blowing the horn. Listen to me very carefully. If you feel as if you are the subject of harassment, file for a protective order. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. The defendant owes your co-plaintiff 858. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I was very nice to them, and they just disregarded all of that. She's very upset because my son no longer dates her. There was drugs involved where she couldn't get the card apartment of her own. I pay my own rent. I pay my own bills. I just have bad credit, and it's not even a drug-related thing. I was nice and put their apartment in my name, and that didn't matter to them. She's a thief. I mean, those tickets were meant for my wedding, and she used them for something else. It doesn't matter if you're nice or not. Give it back. I wish they were all that simple. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from reading the papers, I could tell there was some more conflict than I think we got into. But none of that underlying conflict between any of the parties had anything to do with the facts of the case. That <laughs> yeah. she used someone else's credit card, she received a benefit that she did not pay for, and they were entitled to it. 17-year-old Bella North and her mother, Angela North, are suing business owner Heather Olson for car damage. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2092, North versus Olson. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. North, this is your daughter. Yes, ma'am. Why don't you have a seat? Because you actually weren't involved nor a witness to the incident. That's Are you the owner of the car? No, ma'am. OK, why don't you have a seat? Tell me your first name. Bella. Bella. Bella, from what I gather from reading the papers, you and the defendant's daughter were good friends. Yes, still are. And have been friends for a very long time. So, not a very difficult case. You were going to visit Ms. Olson's daughter, Lotus. Yep. And according to you, you've done that innumerable times in the past. You were also 17 at the time? Yes. You went to visit Lotus 
I'm trying to find the date in your complaint. If I on may... April 16th of 2022. Yes. And when you got to the house, which you had done many, many times before, according to you, you parked behind the defendant's car. Yes, I did. Was the defendant in her car at the time you parked your car? I did not see the car on when I pulled up behind it. I turned around for a moment to gather my things to my backpack, my charger, everything. I then look up and I see the car is on. I never saw anyone. I never. You saw never saw anyone get anyone. in the car. Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, could you tell me what kind of car were you driving? A 2001 Honda Accord. So a very small car. Yes, sedan. And you were in a large car, Miss Olson. Your car is a large car. Is yes, a large... Your Honor. What kind of car is it? It's a suburban. Now, can you tell me why you parked behind her car? If you parked mm -hmm. behind her car, you were blocking her in. Yes. So I parked behind her car because Lotus has told me in the past. You can't tell me anything that Lotus told you. OK. I parked behind her car so that the driveway to my left was free for people to come in and out, because I am aware that she does have residence in her home. And I was. But that means that she couldn't get her car out if you were parked right behind her. Correct. OK. Now, is there parking on the street, Mrs. Olson? Yes, Your Honor. May I see that? No, yes. I don't want to. Thank you. May I describe what is in the photo? Well, I'm just asking you, is there on-street parking here or not? It's not laid out, but you're, you're allowed to park on the street. We have also additional parking next door at the neighbors. They've invited us to park. No, you can't tell me that they okay, invited yes, you. Sorry. I'm just asking whether Miss North could have parked someplace else. And the answer is she could have. It was more convenient to park behind your Suburban. Now, as you turned around to gather your backpack, according to your complaint, you felt something hit your car, your 21-year-old car, right? Yes. Would you look up 2001 Honda? Where did you get the car from? I got it from a small dealership in my town, Sarasota. Who purchased it? I did. For how much? $3,000. OK. And you felt something hit your car? Yes. And then you looked up, according to what I read, and you saw the backup lights on? Yes. I looked up, saw the reverse lights on, waited, saw the car back up into me, hit my car, I honk, the car f stops, the car then continues to reverse again, hitting my car, I honk, I honk, they stop, I then turn back on my car. I reverse away so she can get out, and then she proceeds to leave. OK. And show me what the damage was to your car. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The Kelly Blue Book value is 2500 to 3500 so right in the range. Great. What is this a picture of? The two scratches and the dent. Let me see the whole car. I do not have a picture of my whole car. Well, that's unfortunate. I see a scratch. I don't know if it's a scratch. I see some. There's a hole towards the corner of the light that was not there before. My whole light is. You mean this? Mm-hmm. Yep. See where there's a gap in the light is supposed to be collided with the bumper, and it's not. Mm -hmm. It was hit and damaged. OK. Did you see her car when you came out? No, Your Honor. She didn't see you, so you were in the car, I assume, when she pulled up behind you. Do you understand? So she was in her car in her driveway when you pulled up in your car and blocked her car in. If you had seen her in the car, would you have parked behind her? No. So you didn't look to see whether she was in her car? No. no. And she was in her car, and her car is high. You look up, you have a big Suburban. You don't expect anybody to be stupid enough to park behind your car. You're in your car already, because clearly she didn't see you pull up because she was in her car, right? Now I'm going to ask you, because you say you don't remember hitting something or you weren't sure you hit anything. Is that your answer that I'm getting? When my other daughter drove up, parked the vehicle, left it running, ran inside the house, I ran out and, of course, checked behind me and drove out. No. I asked you a question. You didn't? I, do not, I did not hit anything. Well, you don't remember hitting anything. Correct, Your Honor. Yeah, because I don't think Miss North would have made up this story. You had a big car backed out, and you drove away. Did you see her car pull off when you backed out? No, Your Honor. You did not? No, Your Honor. When she pulled out, did she go in the same direction as you did or the opposite direction? The same direction. OK. Did you see her car after you pulled out? 
No, Your Honor. Not until two hours later when we met. Tell me what happened two hours later. After returning from my appointment, I met Bella at the next door neighbors where we parked, and that's when we examined each other's vehicles. Well, did she call you? How did you find out that there was an accusation that you would hit her car? Because we met at the designating parking spots that we've agreed to park at. And so there was just serendipitous that you met there at the same time, or had you been in communication either with her or your daughter? I was at a brief appointment, and when I returned home, that's where I parked, and Bella also parked there because that is where we Okay, so when you so moved your car after the defendant, according to you, hit your car, did you park in another spot? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you park in the neighbor's spot? I did. Okay, so that would indicate to me that you were aware that you were supposed to or could, if there were other cars in it, park in the neighbor's spot, because otherwise I wouldn't park in a neighbor's house. So you were aware you could park there. I'm never sure when the neighbors are home or not, and I don't feel comfortable parking at a neighbor's house. But you house. did park in the neighbor's spot. After this happened on April 16th, you did not pull back into Miss Olson's driveway. You pulled into the neighbor's spot. I did. And then you went into the house to visit Lotus, right? Yes. Now, Lotus didn't witness this, I assume? No. When you met in the neighbor's spot, did you show Miss Olson the damage? I did. We didn't meet there. We met outside of her house as I was leaving Lotus's house, and she was going in. I confronted her about it, and then... Tell me what you said when you say you confronted her. Tell me what you said to her, that's the question. I said, are you aware that you hit something earlier? That was my car. Do you want to go check it out? Is that the conversation that you had with her outside? No, Your Honor. Are you trying to tell me that it happened earlier in the year and your dogs just found the hole they had never been out before? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I don't believe that, sir. Seventeen-year-old Bella North and her mother, Angela North, claim business owner Heather Olson owes for car damage. Okay, tell me what you said when you say you confronted her. Heather knew that she... Don't tell me what she knew. Tell okay. me what you said to her. That's the question. I said, are you aware that you hit something earlier? That was my car. Do you want to go check it out? And she said? Yes. Of course. And? And then she did. She said, okay, the damage will probably be at least $600. And then she told me to go to an auto body shop, which I did. And she told me to get an estimate, which I did. And that was that. Okay. Is that the conversation that you had with her outside? No, Your Honor. Tell me your version of the conversation that you had with her. Will you acknowledge that you met her? Yes. When Bella and I met outside, she came at me accusing me of hitting her Don't vehicle. Sorry. Tell me what she said to you and you said to her. She did say that I hit her vehicle and asked me to look at her vehicle damage. Immediately, I agreed to go look at both vehicles. And we looked at both vehicles. We both took photos of both vehicles. There was minor damage all the way around her vehicle. And I could not see any damage on mine. And I could not understand. Just a second. Yes. Did you look at her vehicle no. at that time? Why not? We never looked at her vehicle. We only looked at mine. Well, she drove in in her vehicle. Yes. Why wouldn't you look at her vehicle? It was about my vehicle. We were no, it concerned was... with my damage. It was your damage, but you were contributorily negligent. I understand that, yeah. Well, you'd understand that, so you'd want to look at her vehicle, too. Did you ever have a conversation with her and say to her, take her to a body shop? Yes, Your Honor, that is true. Okay. I said, go ahead and see if they can find any damage that could have been caused by an accident like that, because I didn't believe it, and I didn't remember ever hitting her, and I thought it would be more like $200. Uh, Bella did come back with an invoice for six or $700, and then that, and then? Was, that was shocking to me because I couldn't believe that there is any damage just from that. So it turned out that the body work she was going to have done was basically her entire bumper and both headlights, which is, it which seems is like not, a lot. Which is not the damage that even assuming arguendo that you caused, she only showed me a picture of one headlight. Can yes, I see the estimate that you have? Do you want all three or just the one that she What do you want to tell me, Lotus? I was a witness to that conversation. Oh, I'd like to hear it. Yes. Stand uh, up. Move over. Are you living at home? No longer. When did you move out? I would say the second week of June. Did you have a fight with your mother about this event? No, no. I did not want to get involved. Great. Great. Okay, tell me exactly what you heard your mother say. 
she said, this is my auto parts place, and if you go there, I will pay for those damages. Okay, do you remember that conversation? Basically, that's correct, that I said, go to this bodywork sure. person that I know, because I thought he'd see that's silly and well, okay. turn her away. <laughs> but your daughter was making a statement. Is that the statement? Go to my body shop and I'll take care of it. Yes. Okay, fine. Can I see the receipt that makes it? Have a seat, please. This says customer pay zero, insurance pay 795. In my historical brain of information, an estimate from a body shop when they believe insurance is going to pay for it is always a little bit inflated. Did you have your car fixed? Not yet. Not yet, okay. You agreed to pay for the damage. That's what you agreed to. I will tell you, if you had not agreed to pay for the damage, I would find the plaintiff 50% responsible for this accident. She was as negligent as you were in hitting her car, and I do believe that you hit her car. So absent an agreement by you to pay for the damage, I would actually split this between the two of you and find the plaintiff 50% contributorily negligent. But since you agree to pay for the damage and you acknowledge you agree to pay for the damage, I must rely on this bill, which is $795. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you. Thank Court you. Court is adjourned. I don't think it caused too much friction as we were never that close. Still in shock. Obviously, I'm still close with her daughter, so it hasn't caused too much friction. I agreed with your judgment to give the plaintiff a little bit of money, but I'm not so sure on the contributory negligence reasoning. I agree that parking behind someone's vehicle is never ideal, but if you're gonna operate a motor vehicle, you have to check your surroundings. I think that people have to be more careful when they're driving. People have driving. to be vigilant, but you know, just because there's an accident doesn't mean it has to be always someone's fault. Sure. That's why they invented the doctrine of contributory mm. negligence. I actually think it was just lazy of the plaintiff to park in a spot. She wasn't paying attention to her surroundings because she didn't see the defendant in her car. The defendant ran into her car, didn't see the little car behind. I believe that they were equally responsible. But for the agreement mm -hmm. that the defendant made, I would not have awarded her the whole thing. I would have awarded her 50%. Seemed anyway. like just a case of blind spots and bad timing. Bad thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Case 2078, Ali versus Miller. All parties, please step forward. Syed Ali is suing dog owner Abram Miller for car damage from a dog attack. Mr. Ali, you bought yourself a Tesla. Yes, ma'am. A new one? Yes. When did you buy it? I bought it on 6th of June. Of this year? Yes. How much did you pay for it, sir? 68. And there was a loan on the car? There's a loan on the car, yeah. So you have full insurance on the car? Yes. What's your deductible? Deductible is $1,000. A thousand. Yes. This is what your case is about. You were going to check on a child's house of yours. Yes, ma'am. It's my, my son's house. I go there every day. We bought that house for my, uh, on my son's and my name. It's for my... Oh, so it's a house that's jointly owned by you and your son. Yes, ma'am. But you don't live there regularly. I don't live there. And where does Mr. Miller live? Uh, he lives on a different street, but his backyard and my backyard, they meet each other in the back. How long have you owned that house? Uh, since... Uh, 2014. Long time. Long time. Have you met Mr. Miller? I met him a few times, yes. Mr. Miller, you recall meeting Mr. Raleigh? Yes, ma'am, once. Okay, but you've met him? Yes, ma'am. Before June 6th? Yes, ma'am. And your son lives in the house. Anybody else live in the house? You live Raleigh in the house. Is this a tenant in the house? She's a tenant. Yes. Yeah. Does your son have dogs? No. And does the tenant have a dog? She does. What kind of dog? A Yorkie. You have a Yorkie? Yes. It's a small dog. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so you have one Yorkie in the house, and you have two dogs. Yes, ma'am. What kind? A pit bull breed. Pit bull? Yes, ma'am. And the other? No, both are the same. Both are the same. One's actually the mom and the son. And how old are they? The mom's 10, the son's about 8. And you've had them for years? Since they were born. So June 16th, you go to check on the house. Yes. Tell me what you saw when you pulled up to the house. When I went there to the house to check my mail, I saw two dogs. Where did you see the I two dogs? I saw them in the porch. On your porch? Yes. Okay. Had you ever seen those dogs before? No, I never saw them before. Can you describe them for me? They're a big size. They are black and white and they you know. One was black and white or both black and white? No, the one is black and white and I have some pictures of them. Oh, you took photos? Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, you took photos of them on the porch or initially when you saw them? After I saw them, I was walking out, then I took the picture. Okay, may I see the photograph? Take out the photographs of your dogs. Would you sit and give me both photographs, please? I see, one is black. And one is white. And one is fawn color and white. Are these pictures of your dogs? Those are pictures of my dogs. At his house? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now, your dogs are out. You're not at his house, just your no, dogs. Just the dogs. Okay, so now I got it. So you took pictures of the dogs the day of this incident at your house? Yes. And these are your dogs? Yes, ma'am. Okay, tell me what happened with your car. Most states now exclude certain dogs from their policy. One that's right on top of the list are pit bulls. You are aware of that. Syed Ali claims dog owner Abram Miller owes for car damage after his dogs attacked Syed's Tesla. Okay, tell me what happened with your car. Then I realized that I think maybe I need to get away from them because they were very ferocious and growling. And I quietly walked away from them, go to my car, lock myself in, and I said, I need to get out. So I, I, I saw them, they were jumping all around my car and biting everything. They were biting what? Biting the right side of the tire, this side and the rim and all that. What your claim is, is that the dogs caused a substantial amount of damage to your car. Right. May I see the photographs of the damage? Yes, ma'am. So the car had scratches on it, I see. And what about the wheel rim? Is that, you're also showing me the scratches on the wheel rim? Yes, they, they, they were biting all the rims and the tire, and they went into the front and bit on the bumper. May what? I see that? Okay, have you seen the pictures? Yes, ma'am. He sent you pictures of damage. He sent me to the, some pictures, yes. Pictures of damage. Okay, so now, Mr. Miller, what Mr. Ali is saying is that your dogs, who he has pictures of, that you acknowledge are your dogs. Yes, ma'am. Caused damage to his car that he had for a week, that he paid almost $70,000 for. The dogs were clearly outside of your control. They were out of your control because you acknowledge that the photographs of them are without collars, without leashes, nobody around them, and the photographs are taken at his house. I'd like to hear a defense. Your Honor, there was no way for my dogs to have done the damage. My dogs are older. One of them has no teeth. We have to put water and stuff on her food just so she can eat. The other dog's teeth are filed down. Both of them are up in age. My dogs have never harmed anyone. I have ten cars of my own in my yard, and I've never had my dogs biting any tires, any damage. Mr. Miller. Yes, ma'am. That's why they call dogs dogs. They're animals. Yes, ma'am. Because on one dog, it looks as if the incisors are filed down a little bit. Still has teeth, but the incisors are filed down. Is what you're telling me that that was a natural process, or you had them filed down? No, ma'am. Absolutely not. So I no, sh sh absolutely not what? Absolutely they natural. Absolutely natural. Okay, so the dogs still have teeth. They are smoother rather than sharp, but they still have teeth. Okay, but that's why they're dogs. You weren't there to witness this, so I have to assume that what the plaintiff tells me is true because his evidence is consistent with that. He has photographs of your dogs outside of your control, no collar, no leash, at his house. And he said that he took those pictures on the date of the incident, and he has damage to his car. Now, if somebody has that problem, they don't want to blame the wrong person. And the dogs he's identified as causing the damage are your dogs. I'm still waiting for a defense. You mean the fact that they've never done it before you think is a defense? No, ma'am, not. What were they doing outside of your control? They actually got out of my yard from a previous tenant of his dogs that dug a hole up under my gate. Just a second. So a previous tenant of his yes, had a dog. I had several dogs. More several than... dogs. Yes, doesn't live there anymore. Dug a hole under the fence. When did that happen? That was earlier that year. Okay, and when did you first discover it? 
I didn't realize it until after this incident. Are you trying to tell me that it happened earlier in the year and your dogs just found the hole they had never been out before? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I don't believe that, sir. You're responsible for his deductible. Did you have the car fixed? No, no not yet, ma'am. Why I got not? A, I, I have an estimate, and I approached him of that, and I said, let's see if we can do something about this. Mr. Ali. Yes, sir. You yes, have ma'am. insurance. Yes. And you have insurance for this type of problem. Yes, Judge. And you have a $1,000 deductible. Yes, Judge. Did you advise your insurance company? I wasn't, because I was trying to see what my good friend neighbor wants to do. Do you own your home? Yes, ma'am. Do you have homeowner's insurance? Yes, ma'am. Does the homeowner's insurance exclude your pit bulls? Do they exclude them? I'm not sure. Well, in what state do you live? Florida. In Florida. Would you look up and see what's the name of your insurance carrier? I'm not sure, Your Honor. I just switched um, insurance companies. What, did you have insurance, homeowner's insurance, in June? Yes, ma'am. You did? Absolutely. Well, did you inform your insurance company that there was a problem? No, ma'am. Why not? Because I was trying to get an understanding of what was going I'm on. I'm just telling you what's going on. So now you know what's going on. Your dogs cause damage to his car. Most states now exclude certain dogs from their policy. One that's right on top of the list are pit bulls. You are aware of that? Yes, ma'am. And either you pay a higher premium or the insurance company says we're not insuring them. You do understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now you understand. Does your policy exclude your pit bulls? I don't think so. No, ma'am. Well, I don't know, and I don't know how to find that out unless you can give me a definitive answer, Sarah. It depends upon the insurance company. It does. Yeah, and you don't remember your insurance company. So, Mr. Ali, he's not paying the $8,000 that it's going to take to fix your car. That's what you have insurance for. Okay? But he's going to pay the deductible. You have insurance. It's a brand new car because you have a loan. So you must have insurance, which I'm sure you do. Yes, I do. Then if you were having a difficult time with Mr. Miller and his insurance, which I could probably understand because it may exclude his dogs from the policy, you have to advise your insurance company. And I don't understand why you didn't do that. But I was going to see if he wants to go ahead and fix it. Because... Well, he's not paying $8,000 to fix it. He's going to pay the $1,000 deductible on your policy. He was suggesting me that he could just go and get his spray paint and paint that little thing. And I, I didn't like that idea. And I said, let's go to Tesla and have it done by the properly from... Absolutely. I agree with you. It's a brand new car. You should have it done by Tesla through your insurance. That's true. Yes. Good. Yes. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,000, which covers your deductible. We're finished. This court is adjourned. Animal Control said my dogs were so loving and peaceful, they showed no aggression to them. I mean, I like to have people as good neighbors. Even after they put the, the, the pole in, um, in the hoop around their necks, my dogs were wagging their tails. The neighbor's dog has damaged some damage to my car, and I want the neighbor to be up to that responsibility. The plaintiff bought a new Tesla and has a loan on the Tesla. When you have a loan on a car, you're required by the lender to maintain insurance, both collision and liability. This is not a malicious act. It was a careless act. Mm -hmm. And I think he should use his insurance to pay for it. I think it was fair. I don't think that there was an issue of fact. Did you? No, I didn't. I think that that was fair because you have insurance for that purpose so that you don't have to pay $8,000 out of pocket to fix damage from an accident. So he should have used it. Melissa Duran is suing her former property manager, Tracy Shaw, for wrongful eviction and an assault. Court come to order. All rise. Be seated, please. Case 2097, Duran versus Shaw. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Duran, the defendant is the property manager at a place where you used to live. Yes. And you are suing her for evicting you from that place. You want a whole bunch of money. You're suing her for $10,000 for your moving expenses, for assault, for emotional distress because you had to move. Ms. Shaw says that your behavior caused you to be evicted. You violated the rules, and that's why you were served notice of eviction. So first, let me know when you started living at the property that is managed by the defendant. In 2018. Did you have a lease? Yes, I did. did do you have a copy of that lease with yes, you? Yes, I do. I'd like to take a look at it. Okay, so this initial lease was August of 2019, and it terminated on July 31st, 2020. It provided for three people to live in the apartment. Okay, and was the lease renewed? Nope. 
Okay. And so then you became a month-to-month -month tenant. Yes. And that was in February of 2020. They also increased the rent. That's okay. They're allowed to do that. That's a business. No, I know. They're allowed to do that. When your lease was extended on a month-to-month -month basis after February of 2020, would you tell me if the same people lived in the apartment as were on the original lease? No. So more people moved in? Yes. Who? That would be my sister and my mother. Sisters? Yes. Two sisters? Yes. They and were when did they move in? Maybe about, uh, maybe 2020, maybe? I'm not, couldn't really be positive. So that would have been in violation of your original lease? Yes. And it was an apartment that you were yes. renting? And the apartment complex has a pool? Yes, it does. And the incident around, circumstances surrounding this eviction that was served on you, that happened in what month and year? It was in um, June of this year. How long, Ms. Shaw, have you been the property manager? Since the end of November of last year. November of 2021? Yes. And in November of 2021, did you know that there were additional people living in the house? Yes. And didn't tell her that they had to vacate, that it was in violation of the terms Not, of her underlying le lease? I had that morning, actually, when the confrontation happened. No, I'm I had talking just... about, shh, pay attention. I... My question was, did you register any complaint with the plaintiff about the additional people living there? Be very careful that you tell me the truth, because I know that you think you may know where I'm going, but you don't. Did you make any complaint to her, November, December, January, February, March, April, or May? The answer is either yes or no about the other people okay. living in the house. No. So I guess I'm going to start with you because an incident occurred that resulted in her being evicted, that you're serving her with a notice of eviction. Right. Tell me when that took place because I have to know what your reason was. That's a fair statement. Yes. Right. Okay. So in June 22, like I said, that morning I had served on that. What morning? Week. June 21st or something, I believe. What kind of letter were you serving on her? Um, I just gave them, mine is, uh, it's just a complaint notice, you know, saying that. Do you have a copy of that? I may. Do you know what she's talking about? Yes, I have a copy. I'd like to see it. There you go. Okay, well, this is a letter that says you and your company were eating and drinking in the pool area. Even after I told them to stop, that it wasn't allowed, they did not stop. And there is absolutely no eating or drinking in the pool area. Okay, so that's the letter she yes. served to you. And that was on June 21st. That's the letter she served to you. Now, who was, eating, who was eating and drinking in the pool? That would be my sister. That wasn't just your sister. No, it was her and her friend. No, no, just a second. Let's get it together. So your sister, who wasn't supposed to be there, but they sort of let that skate. Oh, well, it wasn't okay. supposed to be there. Okay. Okay, so your sister and who else? That would be my sister, um, her boyfriend, and two of her friends, or three of her friends, I think. Had they ever been to the pool before? My sister has, but not her friends. So the person who wasn't supposed to be living with you, that's your sister, Yes. invited her boyfriend and three other friends to the pool. She called and asked if it was okay first. She asked you. Yes. And you said fine. Yes. You didn't call the manager? No. Okay. And you are aware that there's no eating and drinking in the pool? That's not what it says on my lease. Is that what it says at the pool? Nope. Does it say anywhere in the house rules? Nope. Nope It's not an answer. Oh, I'm sorry. The answer no. is no. No, ma'am, it is not. No. Now, when you've been living there for a long time, do you use the pool? Yes, I do. Ever had any trouble in the time from November of yes. last year? Ever had any complaint? Nope. Nope no, is not sorry, an answer. Sorry, sorry, no sorry. is the answer. No, yeah. no complaint. Okay, no, sorry. Okay. And did you discuss with your sister and her friends that there were any rules that she had to abide by? No, I did not because I was not home yet. Stand up. First name is? Aaliyah. You were their boyfriend and three girlfriends. Any children? No. You know this lady? Yes. What happened when she came to tell you that there was no eating or drinking at the pool? So we were standing... Just, just what happened when she told she you? She came screaming at us, telling us that we needed to get the food out and that we needed to go. Get the food out? What kind of food had you it brought in? It was just pizza and, like, a soda and water. So, you, so it wasn't a piece of fruit. You were having a meal there, pizza yes. Yes. and food. Had you ever seen your sister bring food into the pool area? Snacks, yeah. Yeah. I'm not talking about snacks. Did she ever bring food into the pool area? No. 
What prompted you to order food into the pool area? It was a hot day and we were hungry and I'm not sure. You asked your sister if it was okay if you and your friends came. Yes. Since you never saw anybody, because usually there are signs posted yes. around a pool. I've lived in enough places to know, and the pool signs usually say no jumping yes. in the pool, no food or drink around the pool, right? Yes. Most pools say that. Yes. Did this pool say that? It just said, like you said, no jumping in the pool, no diving um, to come into the pool, but it never said nothing about food, drinks, nothing like that. Really? Yes. Okay. So now you please establish to me, Miss Shaw, that there was notice that there was no food and drink at the pool. Their pool addendum. May I see? And then also no guest addendum. Just a second. It's all part of their. Hold on. You're Melissa Duran. Yes, I am. And that's your signature. Yes. Yes. The pool is reserved exclusively for the use of residents of the building. That's what it says. Okay. That's what you signed. No diving in the pool area, no intoxicated persons. Okay. I just want you to show me here, first of all, the only thing that they are violating is that pool is reserved exclusively for the residents of the building. That's in here, but I don't see anything about food. The new pool addendum wasn't part of their contract. So when we put out the new one, it was it was for more updated tenants, but we we didn't sweep them on the Hers food. We served them on the guests. Is what you're saying to me. The only thing that she signed is this, and there is no sign around the pool that says no eating or drinking. There is a sign by the pool. Do you have a copy I of it? I don't have a copy of that. Why not? I texted her that I was sorry that they had food in the pool and I did not know that. So that you knew they weren't supposed to have food in the pool. Yeah, but I didn't know they bring it. I, the thing. Just a second. That's not what I asked you. Melissa Duran claims her former property manager, Tracy Shaw, owes for a wrongful eviction and an assault. Okay, go ahead. Because she had moved in prior to them changing the pool addendum, I posted the new pool addendum on all of the doors, and I have actually text messages of Melissa asking me, can we, you know, the no floaties? And I said, well, of course, May I? you know, for oh. children and whatnot, but not big floaties. Okay. So she was acknowledging May the pool addendum that I had. That I'll see. Now, she's going to show me your text messages to her. Yes. So you received the revised pool rules. Yes. And did the new pool rules say anything about guests? No, it did not. So if it said nothing about guests, you originally said that the pool is specifically reserved for residents of the complex. Yes. And according to you, the new pool rules, do they talk about having floaties in the pool? Yes, it did. Did it talk about having guests at the pool? Yeah, actually it did. And what did it say? It, there was no problem, just like on the, on the original lease. It no, was no, no, no. fine to have guests in the pool. No, that, that's if not you, what this says. This says that the pool is reserved for residents of the building only. Well, we were already told before that it was fine to have guests. This is the contract that you signed. Yes, yes, I understand. Okay. So this is the first one that you signed, this one. Mm -hmm. And absent anything else, this says no guests at the pool. This says residents only. Okay. You say that it was the new rules allow you to have guests, or were they silent? There was nothing on there saying that you cannot have guests. It was okay. mainly just saying that you cannot have floaties, you cannot jump or run into the pool. Well, so, just a second. Did it say anything about food? No. Is there a new sign posted around the pool that talks about food? No, it doesn't. All not. I want to see is Miss Shaw, right. something in the new rules that talks about food. And I'm getting very bored with this. Now, when Miss Shaw came over and told you you couldn't have food, you had to get rid of the food, yeah. about what time was that? Probably like five, six, I'm not exactly too sure. And when had this food and stuff arrived? Was it? It was, we brought it. We were coming in with the food. We walked in with the food. She, I'm pretty sure Just she's a seen us. So you and your group, five people, walked yes. in with dinner yes. to the pool area. And did the dinner include any alcoholic beverages no. like beer? Nope. What kind of drinks were there? It was Pepsi with soda. And what happened when Miss Shaw came over and told you you weren't allowed to have the food at the pool? 
She came very aggressively. She, okay, she came aggressively and she, she said, you're not allowed. She stormed out and screamed, get, out, get the food out and you guys need to leave. And so what did you do? I told her, okay, I'd get the food out and I made a call to my sister to come help me with the food. And as we were packing... Where was your sister? She was upstairs. So when you came out with the food, you came out of the apartment. No, we had just gotten there. We had... We were coming from another pool area that wasn't open. What other open. pool area? My boyfriend's friend. We were going to swim at his pool, but it wasn't available because there was too many people there. Were you at your boyfriend's house during the day? Uh, no. I was at school, and they were all at work, so we all just, like, met up after everything. Okay, so you were asked by Miss Short to get the food out, and then you called your sister. Yes, and I told her... And then what happened? And I told her if she could come get the food while we swam or if well, not, that we well, were going to leave. Why didn't you just get out? Well, because I was trying to help... Because we were splitting, like, the, the check through with the money, so we're, like, splitting the pizza, who's getting what, and all of that. And before we even could leave, she stormed out again, screaming, saying, you guys are getting a notice, you guys are getting a notice, and running up the stairs to her because she was coming out. And she was like, you know, like, hey, like, what's going on? And then she's like, you guys are getting a notice. I'm tired of everybody, like, not listening and coming to me with your problems. And then she, my sister was like, whoa, like, you know, like, hey, like, relax. I'm coming to get the food. And then she threw the paper and my sister backed up, like, you know. Okay. She, like, so what, went so the letter, she yes. gave your sister the letter. It was a notice. She gave you the paper that said, this is a complaint. There are people in the pool who are eating, drinking. They don't belong here. They're not, whatever she said, here's your notice. Yes. Okay. And that was on the 21st of June. Then yeah. what happened? Well, after she threw the paper at me, um, she turned back around, still yelling, and she stomped down the stairs, and I'm trying to tell her, you didn't give me time to come and get the food. And, and, and she slammed, she ran back in her apartment and slammed her door. And she went back to her apartment, and you went where? Back into my house. Okay, you went back into your house. So yes. what did you do when you went when back into your house? When I got back there, I texted her telling her that I was sorry that they had food in the pool and I did not know that because I did not know at the time. Just a second. So, Ms. Duran, so that... Let's cut to the chase. So that you knew they weren't supposed to have food in the pool, only snacks. Yeah, but I didn't know they bring it, I, the thing. Just a second. That's not what I asked you. Okay, I'm sorry. You knew that there was no food in the pool, only water and snacks. Okay, yes. So you knew that. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, if you know that and you have given... I'm just telling you what the law is. Mm -hmm. If you know that, that there is a rule, and you don't convey that, that's your problem. Okay? Okay. All right, so that's June 21st, when guests that you agreed to have in the pool, you didn't know that there was food there, you knew that there wasn't supposed to be food there. That knowledge is imparted to your guests. That's a legal assumption. I want to know what happened after June 21st. When were you served with a three-day notice to quit? I believe it was on the 24th. I'd like to see it. Okay. I have three of the same. They sent me three of them. I just have to see one. Did the attorney, who you say you gave by a cash app, by a cash app, return any of the money? Okay, well, you served this three-day notice to quit, Ms. Shaw, and in it, you were alleging threatens to commit a crime. So I assume that the person... It talks about a statement, threatens to commit a crime. I assume that the threat was directed to you. Yes. In any event, you were given a three-day notice to quit, but actually you managed to get that extended to 30 days. Yes. And one of the things that you had to do was to hire an attorney. Yes. And when you hired an attorney, did you hire an attorney and pay a retainer? Oh, yes, I did. Okay. I'd like to see proof of what you paid the attorney. I don't think I bring the one that pertained to the lawyer. What I do have is him finding out what the criminal act was. No. You're a month-to-month -month tenant. Yes. Landlord has a right to give you a 30-day notice and say, you have to quit the premises. You have no legal right to be there. My only question is, you were not given 30 days notice. You were given a three-day notice. And I'm not actually convinced that there was a basis to give you a three-day notice. If I called him, would he tell me that you paid him $1,200? Yes. $1, yes, he would. Though I still owe him $250. So you paid him $950. OK, I, OK. What do you mean, OK? Melissa Duran has accused her former property manager, Tracy Shaw, of wrongfully evicting her. 
Tracy claims Melissa was violating apartment rules. Now, if you got 30 days, and the reason you got 30 days is because you retained an attorney, I'm prepared to look to see how much you paid the attorney, because that's an expense that you have that you wouldn't have had but for the three-day notice to quit. They're entitled to tell you to leave. I mean, yeah. you're there with too many people living in the apartment. They've already had a kerfuffle because you allowed your sister and her boyfriend and friends to come to the pool. They were told no food. They ignored them. But I don't think any of that rises to the level of grounds to give you a three-day notice to quit. I think that if they want to tell you that you have to be out in 30 days, that's reasonable. But they didn't. They gave you a three-day notice, forcing you to hire an attorney. I'm prepared to give you the attorney's fees if you prove to me that you paid an attorney. I, I do have proof of that, but I do not have it with me. Okay. And how much did you pay him? That's an easy thing for me to verify. Um, I believe it was no. 1200 I want you to think about it carefully. No, it, it was 1200 because he had lowered it. He lowered it from 1400 to 1200 And you paid him by check or cash? I paid him in um, cash app is the only thing, only way I could. Did he go to court with you? We never, we haven't. This is the first court we have been to. So how did he get you 30 days? Because I got the three-day notice and it kept saying I committed a criminal act. Okay, let's. So that was the reason why I obtained the lawyer so he can find out what the criminal act was. And just by phone calls, he got them to extend it to 30 days. So yes. you were never in, and you left after the 30 days? I left before the 30, I left on August 1st. Okay, and where did you go? I had to move all the way to Atwater, California. Is that where you live now? Yes, it is. And who lives with you? My husband and um, my young son. That's it, just the three of us. We moved into a smaller, more expensive place. Okay, and you left your sisters? And my mother. And your mother. They are some more completely different. Okay, what do you? This is in their lease about um, disturbances and threats. Listen, I've already made a determination that the three-day notice should have been a 30-day notice to leave. I don't think that anything that I've heard today rises to the level of giving people who've been in the apartment as long as they had, especially over pizza, requires a three-day notice. There. So the only question that I'm entertaining on behalf of the plaintiff and the only monetary award that I'm going to contemplate are attorney's fees. Mm -hmm. Did the attorney, who you say you gave by a cash app, return any of the money since he never had to go to court for you? No, he did not. Just a second, if I called him, well, right now, would he tell me that you paid him $1,200? Yes. yes, he would. Yes, he would. Though, what I was going to tell you is that I did not have enough to pay him completely. I still owe him $250. So you didn't pay him. So you paid him $950. Okay, I, okay. I'm sorry. What do you mean, okay? I didn't, no, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't. You, so you paid him $950? Yes. I'm awarding you $950, which are your attorney's fees, for the reason that, for, I'm speaking, for the reasons that I've stated, because they have an absolute right to give you a 30-day notice, tell you to leave, and there was a basis for it, actually. And you know, there was a basis for saying, your guests, which is you, are not abiding by the rules, you're a month-to-month -month tenant, Right now, we do not intend to keep you as a tenant. We're giving you 30 days notice to find another place. I think that would have been absolutely a problem. Speaking would have been absolutely appropriate. I think a three-day notice to quit was inappropriate given the level of infraction. So I'm awarding you the council fees because that's what it took to get you your 30 days. This case is over. Thank you very much. Thank you. This court is adjourned. Oh, I'm disappointed in the decision. Her actions of her aggression, throwing something in my face, that was a little bit excessive. I don't feel that I got to say uh, more of the story that continued to happen. Her actions caused me to get evicted in three days. They have bad character, and so I don't think that I owe them anything. I mean, I didn't think anything like what come to this, you know. I'm just glad they're gone. I'm happy to be out because I just really wanted her to be held responsible for what she did. So a trend I've seen a lot here is plaintiffs suing for wrongful eviction when they're a month-to-month -month tenant. And from what I've learned in landlord-tenant law in New York, I know it varies a lot from state to state, is the landlord only has to give you as much notice as your term, which if you're a month-to-month -month tenant would be 30 days. So people have to really understand the legalese of their contract and of their lease because if you feel like you're being wrongfully evicted as a month-to-month -month tenant, that's a different standard than if you have a standard year-long written lease. lease. Well, that's sort of the reason. I didn't think that 
the one instance that was raised was sufficient to give them a three-day emergency notice to mm -hmm. quit. Might have been enough, that coupled by the fact that there were too many people living in the apartment, to give them a 30-day notice. That is, you're right, it's your property. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think it rose to the level of a three-day notice to quit for threats. I didn't either, so I agreed with your 950 judgment yeah. for the attorney's fees. I would have been happier if she had some sort of a receipt or something from her cash app, yeah. because she very quickly changed the 1200 to 950 she was honest. I think. He's suing his former friend, Jacob Knapp, for dental and medical bills. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2110, Costello versus Knapp. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Costello, you and Mr. Knapp were out drinking in the park. Yes. Date and time. The date and time was around 3 a.m., and it was on 9-11 of 2021. And you've known Mr. Knapp for how long? Roughly nine years. We started off playing high school baseball. And when had you first met up on September 11th? I can't remember the exact time. I would say around maybe 7 p.m. Where? At a bar over in Old Town Pasadena. We weren't meeting up. Just a second. Yeah. So you were in a bar in Pasadena, 7 p.m., just the two of you or the more people? No. How many were there in the whole group? I had around five or six people in my group, and we went All to All friends? Bar. Yeah. And you? He wasn't a part of that group. But uh, you were at the bar? No, ma'am. I was at work when he contacted me. Okay, so, um, so you were at the bar starting at 7 with your friends. He wasn't there. Yeah. Okay, what time did he join you? It wasn't, I couldn't tell you the exact time. Approximately. About an hour later. At the bar? Yeah, but it wasn't a text or anything like that. He just happened to go to the same bar. No, ma'am. Uh, what ended up happening from the start, I was at work. He contacted me via text. I don't Do you have, have any... that text? No, ma'am. I tried to erase the whole memory from my mind, so I deleted all the pictures and all the text messages. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. That. Yes. That's unfortunate. I've never done that, by the way. You know, deleted, wanted to erase something from my mind, so I didn't just say I'm not going to think about it anymore. I've never done that. Did you ever do that, Sarah? I have not. You have not. And she's pretty efficient with text messages. Did you ever do that? Never with... have I done that. No. Well, you must be unusual, sir. Okay, so you met at the bar. What time did you get there? Uh, well, my shift ended at around 9 o'clock. What time did you get to the bar? 10 o'clock. And when you got to the bar, you met Mr. Costello. Yes, ma'am. He had a few friends with him. How long did you stay at the bar? Uh, we were there until 12. Okay, so Mr. Costello, you had been drinking from 7 until about 12. Correct. The answer is yes. Yes, of course. And what's your drink of choice, sir? Uh, beer. What else? Uh, the, the first bar that we were at doesn't, doesn't serve hard alcohol, so it was just beer there. Okay, so yeah. from 7 to when were you at the first bar? Yeah. From 7 to when? 7 to when? Till to 12. 12. Yeah. So it's but 7 to 12. At the same, same time as well. Okay, so from 7 to 12, you were drinking beer. Yeah. And then where did you go at 12 o'clock? After 12 o'clock, we ended up going to another bar in Arcadia. Okay. And you stayed there from when to when? Uh, from 12 to closing, which is 2 a.m. And you were part of that group? Yes, that's when I initially met the group. At the second bar? Or at the, the first... second bar, yes. Not at the first bar? No, ma'am. Okay. So you got to the second bar. You were there about... You said you were there at 10 o'clock. Yes. So they weren't there when you arrived? They were there when I arrived, yes. Well, he said that I thought he said he got to the second bar at 12 o'clock. I arrived at the bar at around 10 o'clock, ma'am. And you got there at 12 o'clock? Yeah. Yeah. So by the time you all got together and left the bar, you had all been drinking, you for a very long time and you for a shorter time. Yes, ma'am. So from 10 to 2, so four hours. And what's your drink of choice? 10 to 12, Your Honor. I apologize. 10 to 12. Where did you go at 12 o'clock? Uh, 12 o'clock is when uh, we had all decided to go to a park, um, kind of a low-key area. No, he said that he went to a bar between 7 and 12. Mm -hmm. Am I correct, Whitney? Did he say? 12. He mm -hmm. said you were at the bar, first bar, between 7 and 12, drinking beer. That's what you said. Correct. You said the first bar only served beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh-huh. Is not an answer. Yes, yes, yes is an is. answer. You say at 12 o'clock you went to a second bar where you had alcohol between 12 and 2. Yes. Correct. Yes? Correct. You got to a bar at 10 o'clock. Yes. Which one? The beer bar or the alcohol bar? I finished my shift, like I said, at 9, and I showed up at the bar at 10 to meet up with them. 
to try to rekindle an old friendship. Okay. Yeah. I actually don't care about that. All right. So partially, you got your story straight. Partially not. Anyway, you were two drunks. Now it's after 2 o'clock. And you decide to go to a park. How many people went to a park? And what park? It was the same amount of people that I was with from the start. And you were along at the park? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I was. Okay, did you take any beers to the park or you went without them? You took yes. beers to the park. The answer uh, is yes. Yeah, the main reasoning of going to the park was after the bar had closed, Jacob mentioned to the, the group that he had beers with him. So that incited us to go to the park and have some to beers. To continue drinking. Them. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, it, prior, prior to me showing up, I did stop by 7-Eleven. Okay, so you had beers with you and you were at the bar. Yes. Nice, very good. Now you get to the park, you're drinking beers. Now you're going to describe what you say is the assault that you suffered at the hands of Mr. Knapp. Now, I want you to know my feeling before you tell me the story. Okay. I usually don't get myself overly exercised about what drunks do in a mm -hmm. park. Do you understand? Mm hmm I know that you may be all exercised about it, although I'm not exactly sure you're all exercised about it. So if you really are, I'm going to listen to you. If you're not, yeah. we just eliminate this case. Do you understand? Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. <laughs> if he just simply tossed me a beer, I don't understand how a beer can could chip my tooth the way that it Just did. a second. I can eat a biscotti and it can chip my tooth. Biscotti, that's a cookie. And that, I mean, I could chip my tooth on my grandmother's steak, it was so hard. Giovanni Castello claims his former friend, Jacob Knapp, owes for dental bills after being hit in the mouth with a beer can. Okay, go. You're in the park, drunk. Starting He's the park, in the yeah. park, drunk. Yes. And? To state I was not drunk because I was driving my witness here. I want to tell you something. If you were drinking right. from 7 to 2, you were drunk. I hadn't been drinking the whole time that I Let's was there. Let's go. Let's okay. go. So going into it, I was sitting at a park bench with Maureen here. And then I had another two friends that were on the other side. And we're hanging out. They had the, the two across from me got up. They went further into the park. And I was sitting with just her alone. And I was just about to show her a video off my phone. Next thing I know, I get hit in the face by a beer. After that occurs, I reach to my mouth to see something's wrong there, and I feel that, like, a, a part of my tooth is missing. Okay, and that's what we're talking about. Yeah. That's the assault mm -hmm. that you're talking about. Yeah. And you allege that Mr. Knapp was the one who threw the beer bottle. Yes. Okay. It was a full beer can. A can? Yeah, not a bottle. Did I have you to report I'm this sorry. incident to the police? I did not take it to the police no, because... Just a second. I'm just asking you. Oh, sorry. The answer is no. No, I disagree. Disagree his, that he with, went to the police? With his story. Okay, I'll, I'll get there. Okay, so now you get hit in the face with a beer can, step by step. You look down, you look at your tooth. Realize it's chipped. I say aloud, I, my tooth is chipped. She doesn't... Don't tell me not first. about she. Just oh, you. Just me? I just, I noticed it was chipped. And then after I announced that it was chipped, several of my friends, I guess, went towards him. And well, I don't you didn't know. tell me anything about him. You didn't tell me, you just said you got hit in the face with a beer can. Yeah. That's all you said to And he was the only other person I was standing right there, besides her sitting just next to me. So you didn't see him throw the beer can at you? There was no one else there. I'm just... Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't see him throw it at me, but I never... There was never a case of... No, you didn't... Of anything That's all. Yeah. You didn't see him throw it at you? No. Okay, go. Uh, from the park, Your Honor? Take it from All the right. park. So Now I got two drunks in the park, maybe three. There was actually more than just three of us surrounding the table. Um, just a second. Me and him... Go slowly. Okay, sorry. Slower. Let me take I it don't down know the table. I have no idea what you're talking about. So, as he was saying, we were sitting on a park bench. I had brought the beer. The beer was next to me. He had asked me to toss him a beer. And that's plainly okay. what I did was I underhanded him lightly a beer to him. And in his defense, he's saying he wasn't drunk, but he, it definitely was apparent that he was. When but anybody who's been drinking beer, from 7 to 2 in the morning is drunk. Yes, ma'am. So I lightly tossed him a beer, and unfortunately it was dark enough to where he had missed, and the beer had hit him in the face. In which after, immediately I started to apologize to him, stating that I didn't mean to, but it was apparent he was looking at me and did not catch the beer. So, personally, I think everything he said to you okay. right now is... That's, that's your story. You tossed him a beer yeah. because he asked you. He said, toss me a beer. Yes, Your Honor. And it was dark. Yes. And you were drunk. And he was drunk. I wasn't drunk, Your Honor. I had four beers 
no. within the time of no. one o'clock till not, when this incident yeah. happened. You know, I'm not real comfortable with that, sir. Okay. Because according to you, you had been drinking for four hours. And not only were you drinking for four hours, but you brought extra alcohol to have in the park. By the way. Which was a by the way, container. Where do you live in what city? In Pasadena, Your Honor. In California. Are you allowed to drink alcohol in parks in California? I'm not certain. Well, let's find out. Open beer cans in city parks in California. That's a no. So after... Chad, we're not oh, talking yet. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Drinking alcoholic beverages is a prohibited activity in parks and park areas, according to the Pasadena City Park rules. Thank you. This park that you went to, what's the name of it? I'm not sure. It was up the street from the last bar we were at. Okay. Now, did you, Mr. Costello, and the defendant, immediately after this event, did you communicate with him via text or email? I texted okay. him, I think it was roughly a couple of days later. Okay, I'd like to see the mm -hmm. text. I have that. That's all the I want to see, don't, could... don't say anything else. Okay. Just show me the texts that you sent him a couple of days later. There it is. Okay, thanks, Kevin. I'd like to see these texts from your phone, and I'd like to see all your text messages starting September 14th. It's right here. Of 2021. Mm -hmm. No, sir, you have to understand. What you said to me here, mm -hmm. what you gave me, is two texts a year apart. Mm -hmm. I want to see the texts to him there was nothing. After September 14th, you mean he didn't respond at all the to next, this? I don't believe that. My next I thing don't... that I did was I sent a letter through the mail, and I have that here, and I have proof of it where I had it so where he had to sign for it, and I have the receipt for it as well. What date? That one, I can pull it up right here. I'm sorry, what letter? I never received a letter. Just a sec. So what you're telling me is that I'm supposed to believe that after you sent this email on September 14th, which is three days after the event, mm -hmm. He never responded to you, and you never sent a follow-up email that or was text. The, that was the letter. And in the letter I gave him... Shh, I... just a sec. Okay. Oh, here. Take this back. It's nonsense. I don't want to see something prepared for litigation, sir. You said you had a document that you sent to him that he had to sign for. If you sent him a letter, return receipt requested, then you have a return receipt requested with a signature on it. That's a document that you prepared two days ago. I have the receipt in here. Let's get it. Okay. I never signed such document. Just, just uh, don't shout out again. Yes, ma'am. It's annoying, and I'm annoyed enough with this case. I'm sorry for being so unorganized. I... Me too. Yeah. I'm sorry you're so unorganized too, or disorganized. Oh, here it is. Great. Certified mail. stuck to the back one. This was sent April of 2022. Mm -hmm. I want to see what the response was. There had to be a response. I never got a since response Since September from him. 14th, 2021. There had to be a response. I never got a response from him. Kevin, show this to Mr. Knapp and tell me if he recalls this text message. Uh, Your Honor, no, I do not remember getting this text. So why would you respond a year later? I know from the past, dealing with Mr. Knapp here, he tends to always, being friends whenever, get into an <laughs> altercation or argument, he unfollows me, blocks me on everything. Okay. So th po there is a possibility by that text message I, I, not going I, through. I don't deal in possibilities, sir. I sent the text message, and I have proof of there. It was delivered, and I never got a response from him. I'm just asking, yeah. sir. This incident happened September 11th. You mm -hmm. have to understand, I think, that if that's what happened, happened. Mm -hmm. I tend to believe that the defendant did not just willy-nilly take a can and fling it at your face. I want you to know that I don't believe that. You were stupid enough to throw the beer can in his direction. You're two drunks, that's what happens. So, don't get so drunk and go to a park. How old are you? 27. 27 is old, and you? 28, Your Honor. 28. You know, old enough not to be so stupid. Giovanni Castillo. 
has accused his former friend, Jacob Knapp, of hitting him with a beer can. Jacob says Giovanni asked him to throw it. Okay, it is more likely, more likely than not, that you were sitting with this lady who, according to you, you were supposed to drive home. Mm -hmm. That's what you said For five minutes ago. So you were supposed to drive home, which means she was trashed, because that's what you said. You no, said, I wasn't... This was the arrangements from the very yeah. beginning of the night. Okay. Do you understand? So we had a whole bunch of trashed people, and I am more likely to believe the defendant when he says, you said to him, toss me a beer, and it accidentally hit you in the face. My, my questioning is, is that the... I don't answer questions. Okay, well, where the beer was placed on the table, I don't understand why I would have to ask him to toss me a beer when I can simply reach over and grab one myself. I don't know either. But no it is, sounds more likely to me than not that it was his beer, he brought it there, and you said to him, toss me a beer. And you failed to catch it. That's now, that thing. doesn't mean that the defendant isn't at least partially responsible for the stupidity of that night. But you have some responsibility, too, because I really don't believe that he left the bar, he was angry and frustrated over something that you had no idea mm -hmm. what he was angry and frustrated over, because you were all sitting together, and he just, out of the blue, took a beer and threw it at your face. I don't believe that. What Do I, you understand? Uh, if I could show you a picture here, you could see, you could see that um, if he just simply tossed me a beer, I don't understand how a beer can could chip my tooth the way that it Just did. a second. Mm -hmm. It can. It okay. can. Okay. I can eat a biscotti and it can chip my tooth. A biscotti, that's a cookie, a very hard cookie. And have. Mm -hmm. And have. I mean, I could chip my tooth on my grandmother's steak, it was so hard. But certainly <laughs> from but certainly from a beer can. So I don't believe that you're blameless. What was your dental bill, sir? Are the statements here? While he's looking for that, you understand that if you were sitting there and instead of a bunch of beer cans and the plaintiff said to you, you know, that gun that's in your pocket, toss it over to me, I want to take a look at it. And you did. You took the gun out of your pocket and you tossed it over to him and as you were tossing it over, it accidentally fired. Would it be his fault if he got shot? No. No. Whose fault would it be? Uh, mine. Right because you, you weren't supposed to do that, right. because it was potentially dangerous. Of course. Well, same thing with a knife, or an explosive device. Right. Or something very hot, like toss me a cup of coffee in a container and it splatters. So you don't do what anybody asks you to do if it's not a smart thing to do. Right. Unless you're drunk. <laughs> unless you're drunk. Your Honor, then, if I may. Um, yeah. Coming from a baseball background, as such as me and Gio did... I, I don't care about your expect, baseball background. You know, There's no question, sir, that you acknowledge you threw it at him. And I'm telling you... Right. ...that if your excuse is that he asked me to do it, so I followed the fool's directions. I'm telling you, he's going to pay part of his dental bill, because I think it was partially his responsibility. But if you acknowledge that you were stupid enough to throw the beer can in his direction, you have to be partially liable. You're two drunks, that's what happens. So don't get so drunk and go to a park. How old are you? 27. 27 is old, and you? 28, Your Honor. 28. You know, old enough not to be so stupid. You know, you can figure 17, 18 year olds are so stupid. At age 28, you should be doing something constructive. I assume you work? Yes. What kind of work do you do? I'm a chef. And you? I'm a lumberman, Your Honor. Okay, so you're both gainfully employed, letting off a little steam. That's fine. But if there's a problem that develops because anybody is not operating on all cylinders because of alcohol, you have to take responsibility. What was the dental bill? My dental bill came out to $2,342. Can I see that, please, Kevin? I have this here. I'll give you both. Was... Any of this dental bill covered by insurance? On the dental, no. Okay. Anything else? My, uh, my wholeheartedly truth is I didn't ask him for a beer. I had no problems. I was avoiding him the whole night for the most part because from the past, Jacob has had a way worse drinking problem than I've ever like, gotten to. I went mm -hmm. out that night solely to have a couple of drinks, hang out with friends. The night went longer than expected. Very nice. Not Judgment sure. for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,171, which is half of your dental bill. You pay half. Don't get drunk. You're too old to get drunk. I don't believe that he maliciously threw this at you. I think that you asked for a beer, tossed it at you, and you missed. That was his stupidity oh. and yours. We're done here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. This Thank court you. is adjourned.
All I did was I, I underhand uh, lightly tossed it over to him, and that's really what happened. I did nothing wrong to deserve to get a, a beer thrown in my face like a baseball. Unfortunately, he chipped his tooth, and so it was unfortunate. I said, hey, Jacob, look, like, you chipped my tooth. Like, look what you just did. No more drinking in the parks, guys. Not to do it again. I think this situation is the exact reason cities like Pasadena have rules about drinking alcohol in parks. Because like you always say, it's not an on purpose, it's an accident. But a lot of times there are certain things that can increase the probability of an accident That's happening. True. And I think drinking at 2 a.m. in a park probably is one of those things. <laughs> that's true. So that that's a so many times rules and regulations don't seem to have any substance of reason behind it. But this certainly is an example.